because we want to get the man of God on this microphone as soon as possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we're going to welcome the PPFN Mass Choir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know we can do better than that. Let's welcome the PPFN Mass Choir. Hallelujah. I know they're going to bless us tonight. Amen. Thy kingdom come, which yeah. is taken from Matthew 6, verse 9. And in the kingdom there's healing, there's salvation, there's deliverance. So we ask that his will be done in our lives. Amen. Amen. We've been singing this song for about three days now, so please excuse our voices and be blessed as you listen. Amen. Amen. Every 
have a release by the PPFM Mass Choir. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to it. Very soon, they will release an album. We will publicize it here in Georgia, in the United States, and all over the world. If you agree with me, shout hallelujah. Amen. At this moment, I'm going to call on someone to take a bath from me at this moment. Thereafter, I will come back again. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because we are working together as a team. As one family. It is my pleasure to bring to the microphone the president of the PPFN, the Prayer Pastors Fellowship for All Nations, is no other person than Pastor Bunny Oyabe. Kingdom and Mercy Church. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. He just macheted me. <laughs> I don't know when I became uh, the president. I don't know who. <laughs> that seems to me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> no, don't keep me on. Praise the Lord. What an awesome time in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is the time, the day, the season we've been waiting for. Yes, sir. We've been thirsty for so long, oh, hungry for so long. Yes. When will the sleeping giant wake up? Mm. Now we are awake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not only awake, we are ready to roar. <laughs> I say we are ready to roar. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eyes have not seen. Hallelujah. Ears have never heard. It has never entered into the heart of man. What God is said to do in this season. It's important for us to learn to discern time. You miss time when you cannot discern time. I'm not preaching. Praise the Lord. I want to first of all, you know, observe all protocols. I have my boss in the house. Praise the Lord. I have my boss <laughs> in the house, and it's important for me to recognize his presence here. Uh, he, we've been working together for years now. Uh, by the grace of God, I'm the vice president of Nigerian Ministers Fellowship. And uh, we have the president. Praise the Lord. And there's no other person than Pastor Ebenezer Ikinibome. Let's put our hands together for the president of the Nigerian Ministers Fellowship. Uh, a word for the people, sir. When the people want to hear your voice, sir. They want to hear your voice, sir. A word for the people. Praise the Lord! Somebody say, let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done. Hallelujah. I'm so happy to be part of what God is doing in this place tonight. Amen. I'm sorry I've not been able to come a few days ago. I explained to Pastor Bumio Wolabi, but I believe that this is the move of God. Amen. When God is getting ready to do something, it calls people to pray. Amen. And NMF is in support of this. Hallelujah. We endorse it. We support it in the name of Jesus Christ. And we believe that PPF is going places. Come on now, you didn't hear what I said. PPF is going places. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Elijah was like, just like a man like us. A man of like passion. That's right. See, when you look at 1 King 18, I'm not preaching, the Bible did not even introduce where it came from. That's right. No genealogy of Elijah. The Bible just said Elijah of Tishba. The man that bites. In other words, it's, 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 it's beyond denominations. It's beyond your pedigree. If you can humble yourself and pray, and lift up your hands to God, God can turn things around. And I see God using PPF to bring Atlanta back to God. I see God using PPF, mark my words, to bring Georgia back to God. 
And after Georgia, it's going to be United States of America. And then we can cover the global world. If you believe in shadow, amen. So on behalf of NMF again, I want to say I salute you. I salute all the leaders of BPF. And I know that you have not seen anything yet. If you believe in shout, amen. amen. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Once again, I want to appreciate my boys, the president of Nigeria Ministers Fellowship. Amen. Thank you so very much. Hallelujah. Uh, well, maybe right after the message, we'll be saying thanks to everybody thereafter. We want to also recognize all the ministers of God that are in the house, all the churches here represented, all the men of God that are here seated. If I start mentioning him, I will miss one. And I don't want to offend nobody, so all protocols of sound. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And also, we want to appreciate very specially Pastor Olu Afere, all the way from Massachusetts. He is going with us this Friday. Hallelujah. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you so very much for being a wonderful father. Fathers will always stay with their children. Fathers don't distance themselves away from their children. Am I talking to somebody here? We appreciate you so very much. And also, we have the keynote speaker. Um, I share with us for some of us who have uh, been in the previous meeting. First of all, thank you, choir. Let's put our hands together for people that choir. We did your mini ceremony on Thursday. If you missed that, you missed some, you missed something. <laughs> we appreciate you. You are going places. Amen. The Lord will honor you Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we have the keynote speaker here uh, who will be sharing, bring the word to us. Is someone I admire so greatly, someone I, I envy. I envy the grace and the anointing of God uh, upon uh, his life. Uh, by the grace of God, we've been together for a while, and uh, it's a burden that he has also that uh, we will have a movement uh, like this on ground. Uh, first of all, uh, I think it's important just for one, two minutes to just keep everybody updated in regards to what is going on. It's, this movement is brought through a burden to pray with pastors. We were fragmented, compartmentalized. We were in uh, different cocoons and different holes all over the place, struggling as pastors, as churches. Sometimes we are preaching and we are bleeding. My nobody God. to comfort, right. nobody to encourage, nobody to pray with. That's right. And so we call on some few friends, say, it is time for us to let's start praying together. Amen. I think there's no harm in praying. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And our friends responded and we began to pray every Saturday. Every Saturday we made a covenant as we stand, we are not stopping Amen. because we know it is needed. Amen. The apostle says we will commit the ministry of serving tables to the deacons and the deaconesses, but for us, we we'll commit ourselves to the ministry of the word and prayer. That is our ministry. Amen. And so let's do ministry the way we ought to do it. Let's come together and start praying. That was the vision I brought about what we are seeing today. And by the grace of God, we are close to about 20 different churches, Amen. 20 different pastors Amen. coming together every Saturday, praying for our members, praying for our nations. Amen. Pastors bring the burdens of their churches to that meeting, and we pray together, and we agree together, and there have been clusters of testimonies Amen. of God's goodness all over the churches. And so we want to appreciate all those pastors. Thank you so very much. God bless you, pastors of pastors, uh, pastors prayer fellowship. I think we changed the name when yesterday for all nations. For all nations. Oh, Hallelujah, pastors prayer fellowship for all nations. And so this fellowship is open for any pastor who believes in unity of the body of Christ, who believes very strongly in the need for revival in the land, and who knows that he cannot stand alone. That he needs other people. Iron sharpens iron. So the uh, friend sharpens the so a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. So if you know you don't want to be alone, you want someone else to sharpen your countenance, then come into Pastor's Prayer Fellowship. That is where you belong. Praise the Lord. And so we have this button, and then Bishop Perry Milton came away. 
and uh, he poured out his heart in regards to, to what God was revealing to him. In fact, he sat me down in my office, put all the structures together and said, we have to come together as churches and show, you know, this kind of program. I said, I don't think we are ready yet. I was afraid, you know, and they kept pushing me and pushing me and it was difficult a little bit. But uh, he led the world before he uh, departed to glory, January 1st this year. In fact, if Bishop Milton went to their life, he will be here. Yes. He will be here. In fact, he will take one of the days. That's the truth of it all. Yes. Yeah. And so, but I told Dr. Blue, that's the son. I said, even though daddy has gone to glory, he has passed the baton to you. Don't disappoint him. You have to be here. Amen. God needs you here. You are part of what God is doing in this particular place. And so he responded and we are together. So uh, Dr. Adrian Blue is not uh, a guest speaker or a guest minister. He is a member of PPFM. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I've told him I'm taking him to Nigeria. Amen. We're going, yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so Pastor Damala came to the picture. The same thing that Bishop Perry Milton said, him. In fact, he pushed me like last year. I wanted to run out of Atlanta. He said, This man wants to kill me quick. <laughs> so I'm going to die yet. You know. But it's important that we are seeing the results today by the grace of God. And I really want to appreciate God for the grace of God upon the life of uh, the man of God. He's a man that God is using very mightily for this same time. I don't exaggerate. I don't like uh, blowing the trumpet of men of God anyhow. But what we have seen and what we have heard and what we have touched with our hands, you know, I mean, you cannot uh, argue against it. I've uh, been to his ministry back in Nigeria. He's doing tremendous work, tremendous wow. work. And his ministry is actually attested by miracles. Life miracles. Practical miracles. Lame are walking, the blinds are seen. I'm not saying it, I'm talking about what is practically happening in the ministry. The deaf, they are hearing, the dumb, they are speaking. Mighty things are happening in this ministry. And this is his body and we have been working together for the past a few days. And so let's rise up on our feet at this time as we welcome this great general of this end time. No other person than Pastor M.K. Adaramola. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please forgive me volume because of my voice. May God bless you. Uh, I don't know how to express my joy. Uh, first of all, for what I'm seeing happening. I remember <coughs> last year I was around. Uh, I've been coming for some time. To join the, you know, I love anything prayers. Amen. Because I know if you don't want to compromise, you should be ready to pray. Amen. If you want things to happen, you should be ready to pray. Amen. The Lord, you know, told me that this generation they do so many things except pray. Mm. So, and when I heard about uh, pastors coming together for prayers, I was interested, and then and I thank God for. I knowing this uh, great man of God, he just picked me up and take me as one of his, uh, as if we have known ourselves for centuries. Wow. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he brought me to the pastor's prayer fellowship and I do share anytime I come around. But particularly last year, as we are sharing from the world about, um, you know, we are sharing revelations about praying. I put it to him and he put it to the rest of the pastors that can't we come together for something. Actually, I suggested open air crusade. <laughs> yes, and it was then they were, it, they were convinced that uh, they could do it. And uh, we have been planning since that last year, if not because of um, uh, getting a good accommodation. A place for an open air. Actually, one of my calling is open crusade, not inside church like this one. <laughs> the next one, I think yesterday, we were able to arrive at uh, at one. So next time, by the grace of God, it's going to be outside. Amen. 
and in the lottery, very soon we are going to occupy the big stadium. Amen. 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 Yesterday we were talking about our Father in the Lord in this country, um, Billy Graham, very old now that he cannot work, cannot even go out. That once upon a time, it was, uh, you know, every available stadium was being taken over by him. Mm -hmm. So we are taking over again. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So I want to appreciate uh, this body, especially for accommodating me and giving me the privilege. It's a privilege to come from, and I do say, and I have been saying this is about three days ago, that I'm the latest from Africa Hallelujah. in this program now. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. So, being the latest, you should expect that um, my tongue cannot be like your tongue. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. But I know that majority of us that come from Africa, you are once like myself. Hallelujah. Am I right? Yeah. So, very soon, if I stay long, I know my tongue doesn't be equally change. So, I want to appreciate all the efforts. And everything that has been done to pull this program together. Uh, when I read from the mails sent to me, our pastors are coming together with fasting and prayer. I know revival is there. You know, it's coming. Amen. It's coming by the grace of God. Amen. And I know that what God has been doing, even our coming together, singing together, fellowshipping together, I know there's going to be mighty testimony. Amen. 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 So tonight is the last uh, part of this program. By the grace of God, uh, I've said that in this program I'm not going to be an evangelist, and I've not been an evangelist since I came. Evangelists jump a lot and shout a lot. But we look at scriptures so that our victory will be permanent. Amen. So that even after this program, you begin to see things happening in your life, Amen. in your ministry, Amen. in your family. Amen. So I want to pray. Let's close our eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord, we thank you because of your goodness towards us. Thank you, thank you for your word that you have sent to us. Lord, we give all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says he sent his word to them and the word he left them. Amen. And the word delivered them from their destruction. Amen. Lord, tonight we are waiting on you for the word. Amen. Speak to every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray, oh Lord, whatever anything that has held us down, let them be blown apart by the power in your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray tonight there will be healing. Yes, there will be deliverance. Amen. Demon will pack their load and they will go. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. open up our spirit to your word. Amen. Thank you, Father, because of answer. Thank you, Satan will know you cannot be here Amen. because God's people are here. Yes, Thank you, Father. Thank you, In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Let's sit down. We have been looking at this, um, our team, since day before yesterday, yesterday yes. Uh, today is the third day. Yes, sir. We have been sharing about the issues about the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And uh, in my paper here, I say, Thy kingdom come, part three. I remember the first night that we, we share together about how to enter into the kingdom, gaining the entrance into the kingdom. And I remember he told us that not everyone that come to church are in the kingdom of God. And, and a lot of and there are a lot of people who are, even though they go to church, and yet they are not in the kingdom of God. And I said that people wonder why so many prayers are not being answered. Why most of the problem we have, most of the trouble, wow. most of the affliction mm -hmm. that is going on, and with all the prayers, that all these problems are not solved, simply indicate that not everyone is in the kingdom. Because right in the kingdom, as we are going to see very shortly, and see the benefits in this kingdom, 
There are many of the things we are talking about today that should not operate in our life. So tonight I'm talking about uh, this topic. We are looking at uh, our text that we'll be using every night. That's Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Matthew 6, verse 10. And I love us to read our Bible and um, so that we can go along. Verse 10 says, Thy kingdom come, that we be done in earth as it is in heaven. And I told you that this verse we have read is part of the prayer of the Lord that the Lord taught his disciples on how to pray. Yeah. And that this prayer is not to serve as a creed that we need to recite every moment, every time we pray. But actually, there are guidelines of prayers. That every prayer that, I mean, good prayer should include all the materials that we read in this passage. You know, Jesus started with adoration. He said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed means that honor be thy name. Then the next thing, which is the first petition, is that thy kingdom come. And I've told us the reason, the importance of the kingdom, that Jesus Christ, when you read about all his earthly ministry, they were centered on the kingdom of God. We see his prayer here, the first prayer point, thy kingdom come. All the parables that he taught, they were all about the kingdom. In the parable, we say, and the the, 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 the parable is about the kingdom of God. All this is preaching. Even the first sermon that Jesus gave was about the kingdom. He said that repent and believe the gospel. He said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. We can go on like that. You'll see that the kingdom of God, as Jesus presented it, is very, very important. And that's why he told us in the first day that the reason why Jesus was asking us to pray down the kingdom is because the kingdom will not just come on its own. My God. Mm -hmm. Into your personal life, into my life, into your family, into your church. Yeah. Why? Because the kingdom of God has a, a formidable enemy here on earth. Mm. Satan is the arch enemy of the kingdom. Why? Because he himself has his own kingdom here on earth. Don't forget that they have been chased out of heaven, and so he has a kingdom on earth. He is a prince of that kingdom. And now for the kingdom of God to come, that the devil, Satan, must be ready to oppose the kingdom. That's right. And you wonder why the kingdom is not evidence in your life. Why the kingdom of God is not evidence in our country today, in our nation today, in our family today, is because Satan does not want it. No wonder Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered what? Violence. And you know that language. And the violent Christian were taken by what? If something will just come on its own without any resistance, you don't need to use force. That's right. Mm -hmm. If it will just come and meet you like that, and you don't have a responsibility, you don't need to fight, you don't need to use force, then if it will just come like that, then there's no need. That's the reason why prayer, this body that we are praying, our the, the summation and the totality and the direction of the prayer is thy kingdom come. You may not mention thy kingdom in the prayer, but that's what we are praying now. We want to bring the kingdom of God down here. That's why we pray. And that's why the prayer will continue. Amen. 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 Until we see the evidence of the kingdom of God. Amen. But tonight we are going to another direction. I'm talking about the revelation knowledge of the kingdom benefits. 
the kingdom what? Benefits. Benefits. Oh, you will be happy tonight. Amen. I say you will be happy tonight. Amen. Why? Because when you discover the benefit of the kingdom and the revelation knowledge of the kingdom, you will only discover that there is no, you, you don't have any reason to suffer. No reason to be under oppression and affliction. At these junctions, I would like to tell us that knowledge is very, very important in Christianity. In other religion, you may not bother about knowledge. If your father is a Muslim and your mommy is a Muslim, you automatically become what? A Muslim. That one is not applicable in Christianity. Are you following me? Yes, sir. It's not applicable. There must be a personal contact. Personal, you must experience a, uh, something personally. And you cannot experience it if you don't have the knowledge of it. So knowledge is very, very important. That's why the Bible says, my people have been destroyed for lack of knowledge. And Jesus gave all the key to the entire scripture. What's the key? The key is in John chapter 8 verse 32. Jesus said, ye shall know the truth. Huh? Who is talking to me there? Uh -huh. That's not in my own Bible. Make you free. There is a difference between making free and setting free. That's right. Ye shall know the truth. And the truth will make you. Every one of us is still made by the level of the truth that we know. You can't go beyond the, the, the knowledge of the truth that you have. And that's the key to the entire scripture. Jesus said, Ye shall know. So you must know. The truth. The Bible didn't say, and God will know the truth for you. No, you are to acquire that knowledge. It's your responsibility. Amen. Say, it's my responsibility, it's my responsibility. To, know the truth. to know the truth. And it's one area that Satan is fighting God's people today to keep them away from the knowledge of the truth. It's one area that Satan is fighting today. Look at Second Peter. Second Peter. Look at chapter one, verse two. Look at it there. Even grace, this free grace, provided free by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We are told in verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through what? I say through what? The knowledge of God. Even grace and Peace is multiplied as a result of the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the truth, the knowledge of the word of God. And so, very, very important for you to know how the revelation knowledge of the benefit you have in Christ. If you don't have it, and if you don't know it, there is no way you can enjoy in the kingdom. I told us yesterday, Let somebody open his Bible to Proverb. Proverb. <laughs> Chapter 11, verse 9. 11, 9. Hmm. And hypocrite with his mouth destroy his neighbor, but true knowledge shall they just be delivered. I want us to read the second part together. Are we, are we ready? Yeah. After the count of two, one, two. But, but true knowledge shall they just be delivered. It means that in ignorance shall be just, I mean, shall be just remain banned. Yes. In ignorance 
shall be dust. Even though it's dust, it will remain in chains. That's why knowledge is important. So, within the next one hour, I'm going to share with us some relevant knowledge of your benefit, the benefit of the kingdom. By the grace of God, we are able to share together about entering into the kingdom. And I told you all the requirements that you need to be saved and be born again according to the scripture. And yesterday, we dealt in a part on how you can remain in the kingdom. But tonight, I'm sharing with you about the benefits of the kingdom. And I'm looking at two things there. Before I show you that benefit, let me tell you briefly about the people of the kingdom. Because every night I must always include that. So that you know, because there are people who are here tonight who are not in the meeting yesterday. And there are those who are in the meeting yesterday who are not in the meeting in the first night. I want you to know that the kingdom of God is the only hope of this generation. Is somebody hearing me? Yes, sir. Is the only hope of this generation. And that's why you must ensure that you enter into the kingdom. It's the only hope. There are a lot of problems in this world. Actually, there's no hiding place. No hiding place. At least we're in America now. After America, I don't know where next. Am I right? After this country, I know if you have, maybe you are not a citizen and you are just a visitor like myself, and you have a visa to America, there is no any embassy here or not where you can be refused visa again. You will see American visa there. Am I right? But as we are all here, you are living witnesses of a lot of problems here and there. The American as a nation cannot solve all the problem that everyone has. Sometimes some of us that come here, we will have more problems than some of us who remain at home. That is not the truth. But you cannot go back now when you say, where do I start from? What do I say again? What do I do? Say, it's better I remain here, continue to manage my problem, rather than to go back home. The way we will spend money at home, you can't spend money like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not the truth. Things will buy. Even though people at home, they didn't know. They think when you come here, every tree, everything does, all the leaves is done. But we know it's not like that. We know you have to work hard and work hard and work hard. Sometimes from one job to another job, from another job to another job, and you only sleep about four hours in 24 hours. So the only safe place is the kingdom. Is the hope, the only hope of the world. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 9. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 9. Sorry, I mean verse 19. Chapter 2, verse 19. This scripture, I think we read it yesterday. Oh, it gladdens my heart. Look at it there. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. And of the household of God. That's what happened to you when you give your life to Jesus. Amen. Amen. You are adopted into the kingdom. You become citizen of the kingdom. And that citizenship is greater than the citizenship of any country in the world. And if you are here and you are born again, as we have been dealing with that issue since about three days ago, and you are born again, this is what happened to you. You are no more stranger in the kingdom. You are no longer a foreigner, but fellow citizen. Amen. With the saints 
and of the household of God. Aren't you happy to hear? It's not a good news that you become a member of the household of God. God's family. God's what? You become a member of God's household. Do you know what? If some of us are given the privilege to become uh, I don't know whether people can naturalize into somebody else's family. I know they can naturalize into a country. Many of us are struggling to become a citizen of America. Am I right? Yes, yes it's for some of your prayer points. <laughs> <laughs> but if it were possible that somebody should, that it's possible to naturalize into somebody's earth family, and Obama has to give you the opportunity <laughs> to become a member of Obama's family. I know you'll be excited about it. <laughs> but now, see God. This is what we mean by adoption. Now look at it. You see, many of us, we don't, we don't look at scripture and believe scripture. He said we are members of God's family. Yeah. Household of God. Yeah. We are God is ruling and reigning. That's the kingdom. Yeah. And then you become a member. Yeah. Ah, then tell me who on earth that's why in the book of um, Romans chapter 8 and the Bible says who can count anything against God's elect who can move against you when I, every time I read this scripture I used to be happy I, I feel arrogant in the spirit yes. <laughs> against the devil yes. I know if somebody belongs to Obama's family in this America now there will be a kind of Pride inside. You may not even look humble outside, but you know that nothing can move me in this country. You touch me, you die. He has that feeling. Am I right? Yes, sir. Now we are talking about God's family now, and I don't know whether you are there. If you are there, just wave your right hand to God and say, "Daddy, thank you." Shout hallelujah. If you only hope in John chapter sixteen, verse thirty-three, Jesus said. In me, you shall have peace. That's the kingdom. In the world, you shall have tribulation. So there are tribulation upon tribulation outside there. Outside this kingdom. People are suffering. People are dying. A lot of evil and affliction. A lot of torment. It's all over the world. You watch your television here, you see a lot of crime. Somebody in a, in a, in a shooting spray, just killing innocent people. Did not say that people organize can organize God out of the society. <laughs> Look at you now, we're looking for a place to hold crusade. As big, they have part for so many things. It's only crusade, they don't have <laughs> they don't have shelves for. Amen. Amen. Last November I was here. I ran back quickly and my prayer. And I'm telling you the truth. Say, Lord, give me another opportunity. When I saw that. The doors of nations are closing against the gospel. You may not know. You may not know. The doors of nations are closing gradually against the gospel. All the European countries, almost about 13 of them, you cannot preach openly and preach like that. There will be one law or the other that will say no. Benihim was coming to uh, UK to preach. So much uh, money has been spent Millions of pounds have been spent waiting for him. They refused him visa to enter into UK uh -huh. because he was coming there to preach. If he was coming there for, if a, an artist is coming there or somebody who is bringing one idol, uh, they will even pay money for everything. They will sponsor everything. The moment it is not sport, it's not music, it's not all these things. That you are coming and say, even in America here, now you go to American embassy in Nigeria and say, I want this, I want to go to America and say, what are you going to do? Say, I'm going to preach there. They say, we're sorry. <laughs> that is it. They ask to go and look for a work visa. I mean, there is a visa like that. Somebody wants to come and work in America. Those who are in America, they have not got work. So it's, now they want to accommodate somebody to come and get a job. Amen? Is somebody hearing me? The doors of nations are closing against the gospel. You know it here. That's why one of the that's one of the reasons why I want you to put your energy into this prayer. It's only prayer that can work on people here and they, they will be saved. 
How do you preach the gospel here? I don't know it. If they sell you and your house, you cannot go to, on. Um, uh, there are some TV station where you cannot make an um, uh, announcement or what they call it, uh, publicity or oh, advert. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Then, even the one on one, like where the I stay when I come now, you come out, you won't see anybody. It's a ghost city. <laughs> Amen. Is it not true? You don't see anybody. But like where I come from, everybody's on the street. You can preach. You can do anything. And if you knock on anybody's door. If they don't call police, they will shoot you. Then we need prayer. Because, listen, the Holy Ghost will jump through their window and arrest them on the inside of their house. I'm told you, even though I'm not preaching on prayer today, prayer can arrest anybody. You see, we must put madness into this thing. Yes, sir. That's what you don't understand. Look, God, look at here now, no white. Are we all not Africans? We are all Africans. So why cannot be saved? They can be saved. There is nobody in the power God cannot arrest. Yes, sir. All the story we are telling, you see, the Spirit of God will remove all those stories. Amen. So what I'm simply saying is that that is why you must do everything to ensure that you enter into the kingdom. It's the only safe place. That's why Jesus said on the, uh, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. It won't be easy. To be born again in this country is not an easy job. And you want to remain on the narrow way. Because there are different kinds of ways, but there's a narrow way recommended by God. And therefore, if you are not violent, there's no way you can stand. You will stand. Amen. Now I go to the second part of my sermon. I read Psalm. 103 and actually that's where we're going tonight Psalm 103 God is blessing somebody in this program tonight Psalm 103 I read from verse 1 to verse 5 are we there? We are talking about the revelation of the kingdom benefits. And we see the kingdom benefits in this passage. From verse 1. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all. How many? All. I can't hear you. How many? All, all his benefits. But so many people, they don't even know them. How would they remember? How would they not forget it? They have never even experienced this benefit. They don't even know what this benefit are. And the Bible says, forget not all his benefits. We thank God that are benefits of the kingdom. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Amen. If you have not been enjoying them, you have not been experiencing them, it is beginning with you tonight. Amen. Can you see? You see Sometimes when I read the scripture and I see the level of the revelation knowledge of the Old Testament saints, we need to be ashamed in the New Testament. When I see David telling me that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Can you imagine that audacity? He was not praying there. He was not, he was not praying. He was just giving a testimony of what cannot happen to him. And you see those level of revelation when a man in the midst of famine and you know, saying that I know whom I believe. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. Amen. That anyone can die of hunger. People can die of, you know, as for me, I know. When I begin to read about the level of the revelations of these old saints, they have really walked with God. And the Bible says, if the Old Testament has been without fault, there will be a need for the new. 
with me that the New Testament is higher than the Old. And yet, when it comes to revelation, knowledge, we are empty in the New Testament. May God forgive this generation. Yeah. And the reason is that we have used so many things to, to replace the word of God. To replace the word of God. Some can play game inside this computer for a whole day. Playing game. The one you cannot play, um, we are, you know, over there, you see, they used to do betting and do a lot of things. It's now with us here. The devil has manufactured so many things to engage you, to take you from God, to withdraw you from God. So many things to take your time from God. And the devil is comfortable if you know that two things are absent in your life. The word and prayer. The moment that one is done, oh, no, it just, it just, it's comfortable, actually. Amen. When I read all those levels of revelation, David was saying in the Bible, he said, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? <sighs> just shadow. He turned death to shadow. Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. When I read about this great man of God, he was saying, as soon as they hear of me. You only need to hear about David. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. Yeah. And the stranger will submit. Yeah. Old Testament. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I say amen. amen. They send bands of soldiers to go and arrest just a single man of God. Elisha in the Old Testament. You still know the story. Yes, sir. To arrest him. <laughs> and these soldiers, they have come. You see, they, they, they know that there is power in Elisha. Mm -hmm. Because they came in the night. They have occupied all the mountains surrounding the city where the man of God was there. Just to arrest a man. I think one soldier is enough. If you want to arrest just one man. <laughs> Why thousands and thousands of soldiers have filled the mountains? Looking for just a man. And the man have known that they are there. And yeah, when the servant went out in the morning to pray, and he ran back and said, My master were in trouble. He said, I can never be in trouble. <laughs> ah, can never, a man of God does, can never be in trouble. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, But the mountains are filled with. Do you know what he said? He said, They that be with us. Yeah. Ah. Hallelujah. Listen, he was singing out of revelation. He has read the Bible. He knows what the Bible says that the angels of the Lord encamp around them that fear them. He knows that scripture. So then we have the New Testament now. We don't even know those benefits that in the first place. Not to talk of contending for them. It is time to go and see that with our Bible. I said it was yesterday. If they tell us now that somebody is coming from uh, Cameroon or from Togo, from uh, Nigeria, from anywhere, and they want to show you a um, vision of uh, what will happen to you tomorrow, everybody will. will those never who have not been coming to church for the past two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and a, a prophet is coming. A prophet is coming. Everybody will gather. Let's go back to the Bible. The revelation here can never fail. Amen. Amen. So look at it. David said, Bless the Lord of my soul, verse 2, and forget not all his benefits. Verse 3. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who cried thee with loving kindness and tender mercy? Who satisfy thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed? Now, this is where we're going to set you tonight because I'll take them one by one now. I want to show you. You see, sometimes it's not enough for you to just read a promise. That's why they don't grip our mind. We just read it as you read it now, and we are reading Amen, Amen. Few hours time because so. A lot of trouble and problem in the world we forget and then we'll not be able to achieve anything so look at this benefits of the it's more than the but let's just look at the one that is concentrated here and don't forget that this man of god david 
has, you know, is writing by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And actually he's talking about the benefit of the kingdom. And the first one he mentioned in verse 3, who forgiveth all thy iniquities. And I remember yesterday we emphasized it. Forgiveness of sin is one of the greatest miracles you receive in the Lord. Amen. There are so many people who claim to have been born again and their sins are not forgiven. Why? Because they didn't do a thorough job when they said they were getting born again. The message you have, the day you say you are born again, matters. It matters. You, you, wonder, you see people today that um, just any little temptation, they throw away Jesus. And you wonder what's their problem. Any little, maybe has lost his job, lost his house, lost everything. He began to abuse Jesus. Jesus, where were you? When I lost my job, what were you doing? When I lost my house, I lost everything now. He will stop going to church. You don't see him in church. You don't see him do anything. And if he's maybe he's attending a good church and they are putting it, they begin to miss fellowship. In case the pastor say, bro, where is our pastor? So you don't have feeling for me at all. <laughs> if you go and research into where he was born again, ask the message he had when he was born again. It may be a message that was anchored on you do this, then Jesus will do this. Conditional salvation. 